Hey there, welcome back to my little workshop. And let me show you what we're doing today. This is the, what is this, Saturday after Christmas. And as I posted on my Facebook page, Santa and Pam and the kids were good to me. So I've got some things, I've, I've got my Taylor guitar here. And let me see if I can get this in the camera for you. Kind of see it there. Um, and it's actually an entry-level Taylor guitar because, you know, I don't have the money to spend three, four, five thousand dollars on a guitar. So it's an entry-level Taylor. And what I've been able to do is take some measurements. Um, my daughter just bought a super nice Taylor. Um, I think it's a 322 CE or something like that. Super nice Taylor guitar. Um, and she brought it over and I took some measurements as far as uh, the neck relief and the string height, uh, the first fret action, all of that. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this guitar up similar to that one. Now I can't change the wood that the guitar is made out of. and But what I can do is I can do some upgrades. And again, let me try to keep you in the camera here. Um, I'm using kind of a new setup here. I got a microphone for the phone that I'm using to record, a uh, mount to hold it on the tripod. So I'm hoping that you're getting all of this and that I'm keeping you in the in the video here. I guess I'll know when I go to edit whether or not I've really screwed it up. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the upgrades that I can do on this guitar. Um, I can't change, again, I can't change the material that the actual guitar is made out of. Um, it doesn't use, uh, because it is the entry level tailor, it doesn't use the high end wood um, and it's not all solid wood and, and all of that. But I can do some things to improve this and I've already done one and I put these one of the things that I did I swapped out the plastic bridge pins that came on this guitar with the Taylor ebony bridge pins that they ship on their higher-end guitars and those that's an aftermarket purchase and um, not very expensive so I made that purchase and put these on here um, you can see I've broken a string um, I was doing some recording there and had a I was trying to use an alternate tuning on this I actually broke that uh, that's the G third string the G and I actually broke it twice so I switched guitars <laughs> and just uh, played it the the little recording I was doing in a different way so but I've already done that I've switched out those switched out those bridge pins and we're gonna do a couple more things today uh, several things actually and you can see I'm kind of set up here I didn't want to be digging around for tools and, and all that stuff while I was making the video so what we're gonna do is again the the tailor that I used as a reference had the elixir HD lights so we're gonna switch and we're gonna put these elixir HD lights on and they're a little different gauge than what's on here this is a light gauge string that was on here which is a 12 to 53 and so I've got my little files here because we may have to make some adjustments uh, to this nut up here to, for because these three of these strings are different gauge so uh, but we'll tackle that that is not that big a deal the other thing that I'm going to do and get these strings off of here or the next thing that I'm going to do is Again, Christmas present. So, thank you to Corey for these. My son Corey bought me these. These are the at the Taylor, uh, the the big boy Taylor tuning machines tuners, and I'm going to install those on this guitar. And so these, as uh, I'm hoping that it's just a direct swap that I don't have to modify the headstock and drill it out or anything like that.
there and kind of give you a little bit of a close-up. I was sneaking around to look in the camera, see if I was had that in a good angle. So we're going to put those on there. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is tailor on all of their high-end guitars is they put, uh, they use a brand, a certain brand of saddle and nut. Now this guitar has this, and you can see the brand here, Tusk, and it is a man-made ivory. Of course, you can't get I real ivory. Um, you know, that don't do that anymore. But uh, the Tusk brand of saddles and all of that made by a company called Graph Tech, and it's a man-made ivory. And what I'm going to do is swap out this one that's in here is just a plastic saddle, and I'm going to swap that out. Uh, that already has the Tusk nut which I found interesting. They put the Tusk nut in a low-end guitar, but not the saddle. Um, what I want to do, I'm going to do a little bit of a demonstration here, and because you, you may be thinking, you know, why will that make a difference? And I'm going to try to show you that here. All right, so here we've got the hard surface of the desk. And I've got three different saddles here. This one here, and, and I'll explain the numbers to you in a little while, uh, that's 80 thousandths, 90 thousandths. Um, I, I made that again, I'll explain it, but it's a really quick way for me to set up string height. Uh, but that's plastic. This one is a bone saddle. So we got three different materials. We've got just the low end, I mean, if you go online, um, Amazon or someplace and you buy a $60 guitar, this is what it's going to have. It's going to have a cheapy plastic saddle in it. Now, what's going to happen is over time that it's going to be problematic because you're going to get these big grooves in here and it's going to affect the sound in a negative, not a positive way. But plastic, this is actual bone. Um, so it's, you know, cow bone, ox bone, some sort of a a bone and then we've got the man-made ivory tusk brand saddle and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop these we're going to do the drop test and I'm just going to drop these on the desk and I'm hoping with the microphone and everything that I have that you'll be able to uh, pick up the differences in the sound and I, I'll try to boost even the volume if I need to when I'm doing the video editing uh, but here's the plastic So that's plastic. Here's the bone. So you can already hear the tone difference. A lot more dense, right? Um, so you can already hear the tone. Now here's the tusk, and pay attention to this. Can you hear the difference in how that rings out? So again, plastic, bone, Tusk. So um, this will be the first time I've ever used a Tusk saddle and I'm very very interested to see the, the effect that it has on the tone of the guitar. So let me bring the guitar back and we're also going to do some cleanup and oil the fretboard and all that kind of stuff. Anyway I'm going to First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull the strings off the guitar and I'm going to just, uh, I don't know if I'll speed up this part of the video or just break, but I, that's really not um, all that exciting. So um, I probably won't keep you in and everybody needs to have some sort of a, they, they make all kinds of these to, to pull these bridge pins out and I, I've seen all kinds of tools. This is just the one that I happen to use. Um, I've seen other people just grab a pair of needle nose pliers and pull on these and man I don't recommend that because it really makes them look bad. Um, especially if you have plastic bridge pins which is very very common in guitars to use plastic. Uh, but if you spend the money and you get ebony or bone or um, 
water buffalo horn or some of these other materials, brass even, uh, you really don't want to mess them up by using pliers. So I, I recommend you pick, pick up, uh, these are really, really inexpensive. Um, and again, I've got a string winder, but I'm for some reason, um, I've gone through and straightened up the little work area here and all of that, and I can't find this silly thing. Um, it, it goes on the end of my drill and you just bzz, bzz, and it helps to wind and unwind. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these strings off of here and I don't know if I'll do a, like a time lapse where I speed up the video for that whole process or I'll just bring you back when I get that done. However I decide to do that in the editing, that's what we'll do. So first thing, I'm going to get these strings off of here. All right, so there's that little bit of excitement. Um, let me just show you real quick how easy, and this one I'm just gonna take out. Now, I do recommend, and and you'll find that, that most people do, is keep your bridge pins, because they have this little, let me see if I can get this in the camera here. See if you can see that. They have a little ridge in there and what happens is the ball end of the string rides in here and the different thicknesses of the strings the the bridge pins kind of accommodate themselves over time to that so what I recommend is you lay these out um, and just so you can put them back in the same place that they they came out of if you get them swapped around that some can sometimes cause cause you a problem uh, but I'm going to show you how this works real quick uh, this just has a little opening in it it slides underneath the bridge pin and it just lifts it it super easy just lifts it right out of there so I'm just gonna pop all these out of here this one is the string was already dead so or broken so I didn't need anything there The other thing you don't have to worry about using something like this is getting the, the top of your um, bridge all scratched up and messed up because this is a very good job of, of doing that. So there are the strings. Those are going to go bye-bye. And again, I don't know how much of this, all of doing all of this that I'll show in the video. Um, I don't want the video to be extremely long and I don't want to bore you to tears either. So, um, but this saddle and when I, I'll explain this a little bit more, but when we put the new saddle in, it'll fit in and you can see it's, it's quite a bit. Let me see if I can show this to you here on the video. You can see the size difference, the fact that we're quite a bit, the new one is quite a bit taller, so we're gonna have to sand this off of here. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll probably mark it, get it down to this level, then get the strings on, and then we'll adjust it from there, take it down as much as we need to to get the string height. But you can see, let me see here, I'm trying to keep you in the video. There we go, so you can see the difference. And that's how they all of these come. Um, you know, none of these saddles and nuts and all of that, they're, they're not made to just, if you just pop this in like that and then put your strings on, uh, your string height is going to be really ridiculous here. You're going to have a hard time playing the guitar. So it needs to be, f uh, needs to have a custom fit to the, to the guitar. Uh, what I'm doing here, th th this guitar has a pickup in it, uh, so there's that. Um, part of the pickup and I just wanted to make sure there weren't any kind of shims or anything underneath there because I'm not a fan of, of that. So we've got a new saddle and we're going to be setting string height. I didn't want to do that with a shim on the guitar. Alright, so I think first order of business is to get these 
new tuners on the guitar. So I'm going to flip this guitar over and just kind of take a look and see there's no screws on the back. If you can see that, hopefully you can. No screws on the back of the headstock, which I kind of figured because I've already pulled one of these guys out. And assuming at this point it's a direct, assuming that it's a direct swap, it's got a little tab here that goes down into the headstock to hold it in place once the ferrules are screwed in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pop these off. When you do stuff like this, just be careful. You don't want to scratch the guitar. And then just pop loose like that because they, they don't need to be... I, I've seen some guitars where people have played around and they, they screw these things in so tight it actually cracks the finish, uh, cracks the top of the headstock because this is just veneered on here. I'm just going to grab one of the new tuners and make sure that we're just doing a, able to do a direct swap and I don't have to drill a bigger hole in the headstock. So that would take our video in a little bit different direction here if I ended up having to pull out the drill and the bits and all of that. Um, what I'm hoping is I can just pop this guy like this and this new one will just fit like that like that and it looks like we're just a direct swap so that's going to be really really easy um, we'll tighten that up so you saw how that whole process works so um, I'm going to buzz through the rest of these get them on here get them tightened up actually I'll show you just again um, don't need to tighten it down like you're putting lug nuts on the car um, just like that and then every time I change the strings uh, I'll check the the screw on the side here of the the button make sure that's nice um, you don't want it too tight to bind but you want it snug so I check those every time I change the strings I'll check the the nuts here every time I change the strings just to make sure everything's nice and snug but let me see if I can flip around and get you in the camera And you can see where I've, oh, this is the one I just swapped out. So uh, we're going to be in good shape just swapping all those out. It's going to be a straight swap, nice and easy. Um, just take me a few minutes to get them all done. So I'm going to stop the camera, get those swapped out, and then I'll bring you back when I'm all done with that. Okay, got all the new tuning Got that all the new tuning machines, tuners, uh, however you want to describe them. Got all those installed. That was uh, good on Taylor's part. I've uh, worked on other guitars. Um, Fender's really bad about um, having different sizes for their uh, tuning machines, which you end up having to make modifications to the headstock and all that kind of stuff. So um, kudos to Taylor for making that easy. Um, so that's a piece of cake. New tuners are in. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just really quick, I'm going to run down and I'm going to polish these frets. Um, you can see a little bit of wear on them, uh, but not bad enough at this point, um, which that happens. I mean, you play guitar and it, it's going to show signs of, of wear. Uh, but I'm using this uh, polish and it has a very mild abrasive in it and just taking a rag, this is an old towel that I've cut up into pieces and a little bit of the, the polish. I'll show you a little bit of this. Again, it's one of these things that, um, again, I, I don't want to bore people to tears. So um, again, just rub it, just a little bit of elbow grease. 
and you can see make sure I got that in the camera you can see that's just the one fret there that um, where it's been polished and how much stuff came off so you just move oh. so there's that I'll move to a different spot go to the next fret work my way down and then I'll show you the all the frets you can kind of already see the one that's uh, where I polished it compared to the others it's actually shining uh, with the light on it so um, I'm just gonna make my way down here and I would I like to do this before I clean up the fretboard because I use a razor blade for that uh, just to get all the gunk just to get all the gunk off the, the fretboard but a little bit of the polish gets on the the rosewood uh, fretboard but uh, once I hit it and and run up and down with the razor blade and um, then oil it it takes all that off of there so again I'll just take a little bit of time here hit all of these and I don't do this every time I change strings of course um, but uh, I do when it comes to, to oiling and, and all of that I do probably at least maybe every other time just to kind of keep things in check. So that's got that done um, and again I don't I don't do that every time um, but maybe every other time I change strings uh, every second or third time maybe. Um, so put that off to the side there. All right, now let me show you. I'm gonna grab a razor blade here. And I'm gonna get a, a new one. So, new razor blade out of the pack here. And what I'm gonna do is just go down the frets. Just And you can tell tell by looking um, where all of this crud is and again it's one of those things that uh, from this end to that end I don't know how much exciting that is but basically you can see as I scrape here all of that crud and you can tell when it gets even um, and it's a wonderful sound so those of you that like the sound of nails on the chalkboard uh, you'll love doing this because and I'm just very lightly, um, I'm hardly using any pressure at all to do this because um, I don't want to, of course, I don't want to take a lot of the rosewood off the fretboard, uh, just clean, want to clean it up a little bit. So again, that makes a little bit of a mess. So what I'm probably going to do is um, I'll do that all the way down and um, do another one here real quick so you can see and again this is not something that um, this actual the, the scraping of the fretboard um, don't do that very often at all just when I notice the the buildup of um, you know the string or the, the finger marks and all of that again if you don't maintain that stuff it can be problematic over time uh, but you can just go right over this. It doesn't hurt uh, the inlays or anything like that. Um, and we're not doing any modification or, you know, we're not damaging the guitar at all. Um, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this um, up and down through here. And I, I won't keep you around for all of that. Okay, I got that done. Let me uh, just bring you back in. Really quickly, I haven't cleaned or wiped off uh, the body yet. Uh, I'll do that. I've got some, uh, I don't know if it's made by Martin or Dunlop or something, uh, some guitar cleaner over there. I'll spray that on a cloth and wipe all this down when I get done. But as I showed you, I took the razor blade, went all along here and cleaned all this out. Um, went along, scraped all the stuff, all the yuckiness out of here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take 
take a paper towel and just some linseed oil just this in this case I've got boiled linseed oil it doesn't matter if it's boiled or not um, but I just use linseed oil it works great and just fold the rag and just give it a nice again it doesn't really matter how you you get this on here um, you just want a nice even or a nice thick covering all the, up and down the, the fretboard and we'll leave it on for maybe five minutes and then wipe it off and then with linseed uh, with the oil the way the rosewood or ebony or I'd have to look at the specs I don't know if this is ebony or, or rosewood it's one or the other um, but we'll do a nice coat of this wait five minutes wipe it off wait another five minutes wipe it down again and then it's usually good you just don't want to let it sit on here like I'm putting it on now because it'll it will create this hard finish that you know it's nasty and it won't come off so or it's hard to get off without sanding and doing a bunch of stuff so you don't want to do that I'm also going to when I get done with the the fretboard I'm going to go down and, and do the same thing on the bridge um, but again just a nice coat of whoops, and it'll wipe off doesn't matter I, I got a little bit much there and it kind of ran around the sides of the to the neck but it, it won't hurt the finish or anything like that so you don't have to worry about any of that um, at all it'll wipe right off and it'll it'll be fine you can see I got a little bit there it'll it'll come right off and uh, so we're gonna give that about five minutes or so I'm gonna hit the, the bridge real quick same thing just and again with these open woods I mean this is just an open grain wood on the guitar it doesn't have finish on it or anything it's good to you don't want them to dry out and what happens I, and especially happens it doesn't happen too much it, it can with especially on older guitars but uh, especially on the fretboard if you if you don't oil um, they can get cracks uh, I've seen them with cracks all up through them and I've, I've actually seen bridges crack across where the bridge pins are and all of that and it, it just because they get so dried out um, that they just crack um, so I think while we're waiting on that I'm gonna grab my cloth again polishing cloth and my polish and I'm gonna I'm just gonna rub the the pit guard down a little bit see if I can't get rid of some of those scratches and move this way just a tad and if you can see what I'm doing I you I probably got you in the video here um, again I'll know a little bit more I ended up with some new software and um, some things for the recording and editing and all that kind of stuff so um, it's kind of excited about that and keep the video thing going and uh, for those of you that do know um, not only do I play guitar and bass and music and you know other things like that um, and, and do the the guitar thing um, but I also do artwork and I've had some people request um, so far it's only been uh, family has been test driving some of my um, those of you that have been to paint parties um, I came up with some similar type paintings um, and uh, I've just called paint with Jim paintings and I've had some of the family over to, to test drive those so uh, I've had requests because I posted pictures on Facebook and all of that of the the paintings and that, that we've done and turned out pretty good um, but I've had some people request for video type uh, do a paint with Jim type video 
and uh, so I'm going to take some time as well and I think do some of those to my YouTube channel as well. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Um, it doesn't get rid of all of them, um, which was, was really never, I guess, never my intention to get rid of all of them. Uh, but it does look a lot better, shines it up, and it got rid of a bunch of the pick scratches in there. And, uh, and you see it didn't take very much time at all. And uh, now that I've done that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to rub this, take a, just a clean, another clean cloth, and I'm going to rub this linseed oil off of here. It's been sitting long enough. And it just really makes the fretboard look nice, the bridge look nice. Uh, just keeps everything maintained, you know, and that's that's the thing. Again, if you um, spend money, um, again, this was not a high-end Taylor guitar, but I still think it, you know, it was still in the, um, I think, seven hundred dollar range when I got it, um, somewhere around there, and I, so. You know, I'm going to do what I can to take care of it and make it play as, as good as it can. Um, you know, it's got a great sound, as you'll hear once we get all done. Um, what I'm hoping is that uh, that uh, Tusk saddle that I'm going to fit on here um, really improves the sound as well. Um, I, I've seen some other videos on YouTube and, and other places where they do that drop test comparison um, and what I'm doing there was just feeling for I, I, on this guitar I, I never play up here anyway but um, just seeing feeling any sharp frets which I don't um, but you can see that there I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe this off the body of the guitar there I want to leave that oil on there and mess it. It's a matte finish guitar, so it, um, just wipe that around there. And let's see if you can see that. You should be able to hold it up in the light. Zoom you out there, and you can see, I mean, that looks super nice nice and clean the frets are shiny and clean and um, it's ready to go all right we're back let me kind of show you what I've done here um, pulled out my calipers and this is digital calipers and again um, doesn't really matter if you use millimeters or thousandths or what it, 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 honestly it, it doesn't matter and what I've done is I measured this end and once I had the measurement I locked it okay and then I went here and I made a, a mark and I did the same thing on on the high end um, and so I was able to let me get this shut back off and put away and so what I can show you here is bring it up to the camera I what I needed to do is take off about 80 thousandths of an inch and you can see the pencil line there and what I'm doing is I'm just using some I've got some 80 grit sandpaper I pulled the carpet back so I have the flat surface of the desk and again not very exciting just removing the material from the bottom of the saddle and I don't want to do from the top because there's a radius built into this that matches the the fretboard radius so the strings have to follow the radius so you don't want to remove material from the top we want to move the remove the material from the bottom so what I'll do and I'm periodically checking make sure I'm not getting an angle one way or the other here uh, that I'm keeping this flat 
Um, and so I'll, I'll spin it around periodically because, you know, being right-handed, you have a tendency to kind of grind one way more than another. So um, I'll do that. But I need to go down. I'm going to barely leave the pencil line. And that's going to take me a few minutes to do that. Um, but it goes pretty fast on the on the paper. But what I'll do is I'll barely leave the pencil line. Uh, we'll fit it in the guitar. We'll put the strings on. We'll just measure everything. We may have to probably we'll have to loosen the strings several times. Take this out and and do some fine tuning to get it down to where I want it ultimately to be, which is uh, the the eight, eighty and ninety thousandths range for the string height. But uh, we can dial all that in. Uh, this will just get it close to what it was on the old one. So again, let me do do a little bit of comparison. I don't know if you'll be able to hear. This is the one that was in uh, the guitar. Okay, so not not horrible. Um, doesn't sound like cheap plastic. So maybe a little better quality of ABS uh, plastic. But there's that one. But here's the tusk. So that's the one that was in. And here's the tusk. And you can just hear, at least I hope you can, I hope the camera and the mic and all that's picking that up. Uh, but man, there's a, a huge difference. I, I, it's surprising to me, now that I'm hearing it for myself, how much of a difference there really is in the ring of these two materials in the saddle. And um, you know, the, the saddle has a huge impact on the sound of the guitar. So what I'm hoping is once I get this all done and fit and all that, that we've got a really good sound to the tailor. I mean, it already sounded really good. Uh, I, listen, I'm definitely pleased with the sound. I, I'm just trying to make some improvements to make it better. Um, so I'm going to take a few minutes and I've got some stuff ordered. Uh, I've got a little bench vise that, that clamps on, uh, so I'm going to be able to do this a little bit quicker in the future. Uh, I'll be able to clamp this in a vise and take a, a sander and hit that, and it'll be a lot quicker. But you can see the material there. Hopefully you can. Hopefully I'm still in the, the camera there. Uh, see the material. I'm going to go down to the pencil line. I barely leave the pencil line, and then we're going to throw the guitar back on the bench and just modify whatever we need to modify to, to get it dialed in where I want to. Uh, we're looking fairly straight there. So I'm just going to keep going on this. There's no need uh, in me uh, to keep the, the video going. Again, it's not exciting TV here. So if, you're, if you want to watch me for however long it's going to take to sand this down, um, I would say you probably need to uh, find a little something. Not that I don't want you to watch my videos, but man, um, this is not exciting times here, um, sanding down a, a saddle, I can tell you. So, uh, But anyway, I'm going to keep this going. I've already removed maybe uh, half of, of what I need to do just in the time that, that I've been chatting here. Uh, so the sandpaper works really, really good, does a, does a quick job. Uh, again, I'll leave the pencil line, I'll get it back in the guitar, get it on the bench, uh, throw some strings in it, and I'll bring you back in in just a little while. Okay, welcome back, boys and girls. Here's what I've done. I, as you can see, maybe you can see I barely left the pencil line. Pop this back in here. It is a really nice tight fit. There's no wiggle or anything. Uh, I had a little bit of the linseed that was kind of weeping its way back out. I've gone back over with paper, excuse me, with the paper towels. Gotten rid of all that. And now I think we're ready. String her up. And I can almost tell you that we're going to have to take some more off. Um, quite a bit more, I think. Um, and I say quite a bit. Um, you know, 20 or 30 thousandths of an inch, maybe. Um, if you want to look at that as being quite a bit more. But uh, I can kind of tell just, it, it's actually sitting a little higher. 
I think, than the other one if I if my memory serves. So, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the strings on it because I can loosen those off and again, um, not super exciting um, guitar strings, um, but I don't know, maybe somebody out there and they've never changed strings on their guitars. Um, so it's now I'm a fan of uh, I like to use coated strings. Um, I started uh, many many moons ago uh, started using the Elixir brand of coated strings. They sound really really good. Um, Elixir I believe is what ships on all of Taylor's instruments. Um, but they're a coated string. They last. I. They they last. Um, I'm gonna say at least three, maybe four times longer than a non-coated string. Um, I used to use a Martin string um, all the time, and they're and and these are these are not cheap. They're about sixteen dollars a a set, but they will last you. It, it, they're actually cheaper than buying four sets of five dollar strings. So you buy four sets of five dollar strings, you spent twenty dollars. You can spend sixteen, um, and in the long run, it ends up being cheaper. And in my opinion, they they sound a lot better overall. So, and again, I'm changing. Um, so you know the the measurements and stuff that we have may be a little bit different because I'm changing the gauge of strings. I'm going from a set of lights, which are 12s, uh, to 53s, I believe. Um, what's changing is the low, or the, the, let me try to explain this. What's changing, these three strings are the ones that are a different size. Uh, the tops, will be the same as, as the lights um, and, and, and again I just went by uh, trying to do what the the higher end tailors have and they use these uh, HD these elixir HD light so HD light strings uh, the nano web uh, Phosphor bronze HD lights. This is exactly what ships on the, you know, you buy a two, three, four, five thousand dollar Taylor guitar. This is what's on there. So that's kind of what I was going for. Um, again, we might have to, and I'm sure we will have to make some modifications to uh, make all of this work with the different gauges and and all of that. Um, but what I like to do is hold my thumb down on the bridge pin, pull up on the string, and that will lock it in. And that way when I start tightening everything, um, if you don't do that, sometimes uh, the ball end will catch on the bottom. Some people file off. I, I haven't started really doing that, but some people will file off this end of the bridge pin here um, to keep that from happening. But sometimes what will happen is the ball will catch on the bottom of the pin and as you're winding it, it'll pull the whole thing out and it'll pop and, and all of that. But what I found is if you just put the, the pin in there and pull up on the string, you can feel when it hits the top of the guitar. And if you hold it down with your thumb and pull on it, it locks it in place. And then you don't have to worry about it jumping out of there. Okay? So let me show you that again. Um, there's a groove or a notch in the bridge pin, put that toward your string because you want your string to ride in that. Just once it's in, uh, just hold the thumb down on the bridge pin, pull up on the string, and you'll feel it hit the top of the guitar. So that locks it in and it can't go anywhere. Nice there. Listen, I'm not going to bore you with all of this. Um, there's a lot of resources out there on how, and I just have a little more linseed oil weeping through. So I'm just wiping that off real quick before I put the strings on. But there's lots of videos. Um, the, the, the method that I follow with putting strings on, I actually found on the, I believe it was on the, either the Taylor website or the Elixir 
website has a video on how to uh, install strings as far as leaving the amount of string so you get the right number of lines and how to do all that. Um, and that's all I did. So, you know, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel uh, and make that kind of video. Um, you know, you can go to YouTube or Google and um, do that search and you'll find uh, 50,000 videos on how to put strings on a guitar. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm going to pause this, get the strings on, tighten them up. Now, the one thing I will say is if when you're doing this initial, what I'm doing with a setup and all of that is when you put the strings on, uh, don't cut them off yet. Because if we have to loosen and even take the strings back off, if, if they're cut off, man, that makes that job so much more difficult. Um, so don't cut them off yet. Um, wait until everything's done and set up and then cut them off. But I'm gonna pause the video here and I'm gonna get these on, get it strung up, and then I'll bring you back in when I start making some measurements and we'll talk about what we need to do uh, to get everything set up and get the guitar playable and set up the way that I want it to be set up. All right, I moved the camera around a little bit and I'm hoping that as I'm doing this, I'm not going to be blocking your view of what's going on, but um, just in taking a look at some things here, strings back on, fairly close tuned up to pitch. And I've got some feeler gauges. There's an 18 thousandths. There's a 10 thousandths. And then here for string height, I've got a 80, a 90, and a 100. And we're still way high down here at the saddle. So that's going to have to come back and go down quite a bit. Um, but I'm going to jot down the measurements. Let me grab pencil here because I'll kind of show you how I measure everything and then kind of explain what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm not sure I'm going to how much of it I'm going to film or try to film or, or any of that, um, whether it even is of interest to anyone. But uh, let me at least show you the measurements. Uh, the first place that we're off is the first fret height. Uh, I need to check each and every one. So I'm going to make sure that you're in the picture here. So I've got 18 thousandths. And if I hold this, do it so I, again, I don't want to block you. Um, there's actually space if you can hear that or not, let me, I'll do it with a pick. Maybe it'll be a little louder, but. So you can see, um, if we were at 18 thousandths, there wouldn't be a clear sound. It would be, that would, that's more of a muted sound is what we're looking for. Um, with the feeler gauge, you want the feeler gauge to go in there and be uh, barely touching the string and the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. And right now we've just got too much. And it's like that all the way across. It's not quite as bad on this low side. Um, in fact, the, the, or the high side, sorry about that, the high E, uh, let me get this under here and we'll see how we're doing here that one's very very close actually but what I need to do is for each one of these strings the slot where the string crosses the nut needs to be filed a little bit to lower this height. And so what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do this off camera because I'll, I'll have to loosen each one of these. I'll lift it off, I get to show you here. Um, 
I'll loosen this off, set it to the side. i show you a little bit, and I've got these little files. Can you see that? Yeah, there we go. I got the little files, and I've measured them with my calipers to get the ones that are closest. So like for this, hot, this low E string, um, I've grabbed the file that's that size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to file toward the direction where the string goes onto the post. So I don't want to file straight and flat. Uh, I need to file down in that direction. And I just need to open this up a little bit and I can go ahead and file it a little bit here. And it's rounded, by the way. So the string is round, the file is round. Uh, these little finishing files, they, they work really well. They do take a little bit of time. Um, and so now I've got that. Put the string back in, tighten it back up. At least close. And then take the 18 again, measure, and we've got to take more off. So that's kind of the process of there um, for that. I'll have to do each one of the six, make sure we're exactly at, I'll lift each one off, file it down, make sure uh, that we're at 18 exactly. Uh, and I really kind of a tight, I, I want a little bit of a tight 18. So I really want the, the feeler gauge to go in. I don't want it to push the string up a lot, but I do want a nice snug fit there with the feeler gauge. So that's kind of the process that I'm going to do there. So I've got my, uh, that's a hundred. Okay. Now what I want to go for is I want to have 90. This is the 12th fret. Um, and again, you count from the far end down that way, down here. This is the 12th fret. I want to have 90 thousandths, and I'm way above 100 on this side. So you can see how much, just to get to 100. If I put the 90 under there, you can see how much, and then the 80 on this side. In order to get there, explain to you how that works. Um, let's see, 80, 90, 100, 110, so 35, I need to take, uh, 35 is the difference on the high E side, and actually 35, is that right? To be 35 on both sides to get it where we want to be. In order to get 35 thousandths lower here, we have to double that amount and take it off the bottom of the saddle. So 35 and 35 is 70. So we need to take 70 thousandths of an inch off the bottom of this saddle, okay? And we've got plenty of room to do that. I could show you with the, um, the caliper here. Um, The distance between the, the two points at the end, that's 70 thousandths of an inch. Um, that is the amount we have to take off the bottom of the saddle. So, I mean, you're not talking about a huge amount of material, um, very small amount actually. So, what I'm going to do, uh, and it's even across the bottom, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen the strings up and I'm going to slide the saddle out, I'm going to sand it down again, pop it back in, remeasure, all of that. I'm not going to keep you on here for all of that. Um, again, that not very exciting TV, so I'm not going to keep you on here for all of that. I'll bring you back in when I've got all of that done. All right, let me bring you back in. It's been a little while, and uh, I've done some work on the guitar. I've filed down file down all of the nut slots so that I've got a, a nice snug 18 thousandths here. I also took pencil lead because the graphite from the pencil of course is slick and I ran 
that down in each slot just so there's no binding or anything just to as I'm tuning and, and all that keeps everything nice and smooth um, I if you can see the saddle down here I took 70 thousandths off of that which put the I've already measured it but I'll remeasure it I got the strings loosened right now I'm gonna explain to you why uh, but I've got the 90 thousandths on this side barely lifts that low string the 80 thousandths on this side barely lifts that that E string on the the high side and that's exactly where I wanted it and um, what I'm going to do now is I've measured the truss rod or the neck relief and I need to tighten the truss rod just a, a tad uh, because it's 10 thousandths at the seventh fret so three four five six seventh fret and it there's clearance under there and I want to have uh, the ten thousandths and it's got probably more than that it's probably got 15 if I were to guess I didn't measure it I'm gonna take these three screws out and um, which will expo expose the truss rod adjusting screw and then we'll see what we can do about that so let's get these off of here real quick and you want to make sure when you're doing anything like this you don't want to round off and strip out your screw heads so make sure you get, you have the right size screwdriver for any of this stuff that fits down snug into the screw head and you see I got a couple of different small screws I, this one is the right size and get at the right angle and put good pressure on it so it you definitely don't want to strip that stuff out you want to keep things looking like as much as possible like no one's ever been inside and messing around with stuff so all right let's pop this off and see if, if I remember correctly the tailor uses a nut and, and not an Allen or anything like that I think it's a quarter inch but you can see that's the truss rod screw there it's actually a quarter inch bolt and what I'm gonna do is I've got this um, screwdriver here pop that off that's a quarter inch so that should fit on there and it does and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it about a quarter of a turn so there's a quarter of a turn now what I'm gonna do is uh, tighten the strings back up tune the you know get close to pitch I guess doesn't have to be exact uh, but tune it back up tighten the strings back up and remeasure this and then once I've remeasured then we'll see so here we are I think we've uh, spent two or three hours this morning um, with between all of this work and you know whatever video that it ends up edited down um, if I have to I can I guess I can split it into multiple parts but just so you know um, you know how long it's been just um, you know probably close to three hours total that I've spent here and just to kind of button things up I'm gonna put the truss rod cover back on I'm going to snip off these strings so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the truss rod cover back on. I'm going to clean it up really well, get it in tune, let it sit for a little while, probably go have some something to eat and just let it sit. Um, since I've adjusted things, I'll remeasure everything, just to make sure everything holds. And then the last part of this, um, I'm going to move over to the other room, set up in there, and I'm going to play it a little bit for you so you can see how it sounds. Hey there again, everyone. Uh, back and I'm going to do a final update for you on the the Taylor guitar that hopefully you've been following along with all of the the mods here I've got it here all tuned up and ready to go it's actually set this is the next day um, so this would be Sunday morning and 
Saturdays when I did all the work and so I've let it set and settle and remeasured and because we made a truss rod adjustment and adjusted some other things and uh, being wood instrument and all that I just wanted things to settle for a little bit so uh, just kind of recap what we've done we replaced these tuning machines and uh, put the, the nice Taylor branded tuners on there um, replaced the saddle with the Tusk brand saddle and if you go back earlier in the video you can see the comparison here and hopefully in the the video you're gonna pick up the the nice ring of the guitar the guitar sounds great it really really does I got the different strings on here the elixir HD lights and so those are on here and then a the little bit of work that we did up here around the nut of the guitar and I'm just going to play a little bit, and again, I'm not the greatest guitar player on the planet, so you'll just have to bear with, with me here, and I'm going to just play a little bit for you, and you can see how it sounds, and uh, it, hopefully the, the video set up here, and we're, as you can tell, in a different room in, in the upstairs of my house here. It's a little room where I have instruments and stuff set up along with the computer, and I do some recording and... Um, editing and all that kind of stuff on the on the computer so let me play a little bit here and um, just see how we do and um, yeah and you can decide for yourself again I hope the video does justice because I've played this for a little bit now tuned it up and everything and it sounds really really good so I I hope this picks up as well on the video as it does here um, in, in person. So here we go. this to you before but intonation is basically I play an E here and then an E up here on the neck or way up here uh, most times checked intonation at the 12th fret but an E and E and the intonation is really good on this guitar so didn't have to mess with that at all it's set up really well but uh, let me go ahead and I'll play a little bit Three, the shots three. 
with all the modifications that I got done and the guitar sounds great it's set up really really nice the action is super low it doesn't buzz other than when I mess up with the the playing here but it, it doesn't buzz at all up and down the neck is really really nice and the action is super low it plays great and it sounds good so I'm really happy with the work that was done and thanks for following along and if you like this video on my YouTube channel, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up and follow along. I got some more projects going on and be posting a whole lot more video to my YouTube channel. So again, thanks for watching. See you soon.